So in this video, I want to go over some common uh, conventions when it comes to creating circuits. Um, this is going to be important for basically all of your homework assignments, and so it's a good, good thing to talk about this kind of stuff early so that you uh, get in good habits early. Um, so when creating circuits, there's a few uh, general rules of thumb uh, that you should follow. Um, if you truly want wires to be considered connected in your circuit, uh, you should indicate that by putting a little dot that indicates that those wires are in fact connected. Um, if wires just simply cross over one another, I, uh, it's uh, a convention to consider those wires not connected. And so it's you know often the case where we're going to have lots of wires involved and they're going to have to cross paths at some point. Um, it's very important to make the distinction between whether those wires are crossed, or whether those wires are actually connected or whether they're just passing over um, one another. Um, some other important conventions, uh, if you ever have inversions happening, uh, you don't necessarily have to draw the entire knot gate. Uh, you can oftentimes represent an inversion by simply drawing a little circle instead. Um, so you'll see this happen uh, quite frequently in logic circuits. In fact, we're going to see that happen a lot more as we start introducing more and more types of um, components into our logic circuits. So it's good to get used to that habit now. Um, when it comes to splitting your wires. Uh, it's always acceptable to split things uh, coming out of the output of a particular logic gate. Splitting things going into a logic gate is, is um, not a good thing. In fact, in this particular case, we see a two input AND gate that's actually connected to three inputs, which is very confusing um, and not really um, possible in this particular case. Um, so another thing to pay attention to that was kind of in all three of these first examples is labeling your inputs. If you have inputs that you don't know what the values are, they're variables in other words, they could be either true or false, um, you should label them traditionally with letters, right? Um, starting at the beginning of the alphabet. Your outputs can also be labeled as well. You see here in this particular example, they've labeled the output of this AND gate as an equation. We see the equal sign in there that indicates that this is an equation. Uh, it's not absolutely necessary to put the entire equation as part of your output. It is good practice, but not entirely necessary. Uh, you can label these as individual letters as well. Typically, the outputs will start towards the end of the alphabet. So we'll use x, y, and z to represent outputs, a, b, c, d, etc. to represent inputs to our um, logic circuits. Um, if it makes sense to duplicate your input labels, if you have an input um, going into multiple gates, and it's cleaner to uh, have two labels for the same input, that's actually a good thing. Don't feel like you can only have an input at one particular point in your circuit. Especially if it's an input that's used uh, frequently, um, that will actually probably make things messier than if you just create the same input label in multiple locations, like we see in this particular example. And the final um, thing that I actually see students do quite often, which is not necessary and makes things confusing, to be perfectly honest, is uh, labeling the inputs and outputs of uh, the gates. Um, you should typically not label gate inputs and outputs. Um, so here you see this AND gate was labeled. That's actually a bad practice. Labeling the inputs to a circuit is perfectly fine. And that's whenever you see letters on a schematic, um, that's typically what they refer to is inputs and outputs um, for the entire circuit. Doing that on the individual gate level is not necessary and will only make things confusing. Now there is an exception to that that we're not going to see right away, but we will see um, eventually as we start developing more complex circuits. Sometimes we'll have things that aren't gates, but they're actually components, they're modules. And these modules will have you know, their own sets of inputs and outputs. If you see a component or a module, typically represented by a uh, rectangle, a box, um, it is OK to label those inputs and outputs. In fact, you probably should label those inputs and outputs. Um, so do it for custom components. Do it for customized mo modules. Don't worry about labeling the inputs and outputs of each individual logic gate. That is unnecessary. Um, the next thing I want to talk to you about in terms of drawing circuits is a couple of the symbol guidelines that I'd like for you to use on the homework assignments. Um, so we're, we're going to be seeing transistors a lot, at least at first. Um, and so when it comes to uh, including transistors in your circuits, I actually really prefer the forms that you see here on the left. 
you see I've got uh, the NMOS and PMOS transistors. The distinguishing feature here is this circle on the gate of the PMOS transistor. These are the simplest ways of representing these transistors. Entirely sufficient. You do not need to include the labels for the gate, the source, and the drain. That's not required. Just the symbol itself is fine. right? And so if you're drawing these things out by hand, uh, this is probably the easiest way to do it. Um, if you're using a computer tool to draw circuits, which actually I've uh, included a link on this particular um, section to some uh, circuit drawing utilities, um, you probably won't see these symbols. These symbols are often not included in uh, professional um, circuit drawing packages. So you probably won't see these symbols if you're, if you're designing circuits on the computer. You're more likely to see symbols that look like this. And I would prefer, um, if you have the option, to use these symbols to represent NMOS and PMOS transistors if you're using the computer um, to design your particular circuits. It's, it's good for us to keep things consistent so that I don't have to guess uh, whether you mean an NMOS or a PMOS transistor there um, so that it's, so that it's uh, entirely clear which one you're actually intending to use. Um, so that's, uh, that's the deal when it comes to transistors. The other thing that I wanted to point out are some input and output symbols. Um, so in schematics, it's common for input and output to, uh, for in inputting a positive value, for inputting um, a high level of voltage, it's common to use VDD. And so the way that you do that typically is to just simply write VDD, and then you have this T symbol that's used to input um, a high level of voltage. Now what the actual voltage is, you know, is not particularly important, right? It could be five volts, it could be three volts, we, we just accept it to be a high level of voltage. Um, to represent a low level of voltage on a schematic, we'll typically use the ground symbol that you see here. Right? This may also be represented as just an empty triangle. That's OK, too. Um, this is the traditional ground symbol. Um, this is used to represent a low signal within a circuit. Alternatively, you may, um, in some cases, just use a simple 1 or a 0 if you want to input high or low values. That's OK, too. Right? So these are more sort of electrically focused, the VDD and ground symbols. These are more logic focused, 1 and 0. Either one is OK for the perspective of the homework. Um, but basically, it does need to be clear uh, whether you're talking about high or low signals within a particular um, circuit. Now, not all circuits will require this, so don't feel like you need to include these symbols in every circuit you draw. Um, sometimes we're going to have variable inputs, so we don't know if they're going to be a 1 or a 0, or they could be both at, at different times. right? But if you know absolutely that you need a high or a low signal, then um, these are the symbols that you should use to represent those particular signals. Um, you are going to see this, like I said, on the homework assignments and the exams. Um, so if you have any questions about these particular symbols or how to use them or um, how to create good schematics, um, please don't hesitate to ask in class or on Piazza.